Hello and welcome back to another episode of You Suck at AI. In one of my earlier videos, I showed you how I created this website using only my voice in V0. Now, since then, a lot of you have said, okay, Philip, I have done something similar. I've also built a cool website, but now I wanna launch it. Is it possible to host a website like this for free? And how do I do it? Now, the good news is you absolutely can do it. For instance, this is the website that I built and you can see here it's hosted at usuckat.ai. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do this. And the process we're gonna follow is roughly as follows. And we've already built a prototype user interface. I'll show you that in a second. Then we're gonna use a tool called Cursor. It's an IDE, um, which is basically a, a fancy text editor. Um, and using that, we're going to build a Next.js application, um, which is a basically a framework for building for building web applications. Um, so it's an opinionated way of how to create web apps. Then we're gonna save that on GitHub, save our code on GitHub, and then we're gonna deploy it on Vercel. Now, if you're not a developer, a lot of what I said just sounds like gibberish. It just sounds like names. What the hell are these things? Don't worry, I have written kind of detailed instructions over here for you. Um, and I'll share this in the video description so you can check this out and it explains every step that I'm gonna follow. The video will be going through these things fairly quickly because I don't wanna waste your time. Um, so feel free to, if you get stuck, just watch this video multiple times or use the guide uh, over here. So the website we're building today looks as follows. I just basically built it using a couple of screenshots from uh, this company Dimensions uh, landing page. So that's basically it, just for demonstration purposes. Nice, so I'm gonna go back to the instructions and then we're gonna move that to the side and I'll try to follow the instructions as closely as possible so that if you wanna do this, you can follow along. Now the tool over here is called Cursor. It is an IDE, which is essentially a fancy text editor. Um, it is pretty damn amazing, and I will be making lots of videos about Cursor. But for now, I'm gonna skip over some of the, the amazing features and just get down to this tutorial. Nice. Now, the first thing you need to do is you need to set up Node.js on your local computer. Now, in my case, I've already done it, but if you have never done development, you probably would need to install that. The next thing is we need to install um, a, well, create a new Next.js application. So I'm gonna do that. And then it's gonna ask me a bunch of questions. Now I have got answers for most of these questions. And so I just need to name my app. So I'll just say example, website, dimension. There we go. We do wanna use TypeScript. We don't wanna use ESLint. Technically you should wanna use it, but for a beginner it can cause more issues than it helps. Tailwind, yes. We don't wanna use the source directory, um, app router, there we go. Nice. So once it's installed, um, we basically just wanna navigate this, CD space, and then what do we call this example? There we go. And now we have a website over here. So we can see here are the files. Now, the next thing to do is run a development server over there. So I'm just gonna copy that, paste it, hit enter and then we're gonna get a local server. And this is this is called a local web server uh, and you can actually just click there and oh, open it. I don't know why it's not working. Oh, there we go. Uh, we now have a server. Let me just open that in a new tab over there. Um, so we can just easily split, switch between them. You now have a web server over here. So for example, we can know that this is live and in the sense that I can edit something over here and then I can go, hello world and save and then you can see hello world fantastic so what we're going to do is we're going to place the contents of this page um, with our website so we're going to go over here we're going to take this copy it and then we're going to paste it in here and then hit save and most likely we're going to get a bunch of errors now. And this is part of the instructions um, and you generally are going to get an error. And the errors are scary initially when, you, when you're starting out, but they don't need to be. You can just ask an LLM to explain anything to you. So you can ask ChatGPT or Claude how to fix these things. So in this case, what we need to do is we need to, what this is telling us. And again, you don't need to know this. You can just ask an LLM. We need to install some components. 
So um, in this case, we need to install Shad CN. So I'm just gonna stop the server. To stop a server, it's Control C. There we go. I'm gonna initialize Shad CN. Just say yes. And then I'm going to look at what do I need to install? I need to install a button and an input and some icons. So I can just copy those. So I'll just copy that. Neutral, sounds great. There we go, add a button. And then I think it said we need an input. And then we needed to install some icons over here. So what happens if you get into this position and you don't know what's going on? So maybe my instructions have um, run their course and you're, you're off grid now. What do you do? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Um, you just copy this and in Cursor, they have Claude built into the system. So I just press Command Y, open up this menu and this is essentially just a Claude chat. And Claude, by the way, is significantly better at coding than ChatGPT. So, okay, fantastic. I've added the error over there. And then I just say something like, how do I fix these errors? Specifically uh, the icon bit. Nice. Okay, so it wants us to install Shared CN. Nice, we've already done that. So you could obviously just have, have copied this. And by the way, just a little pro tip is, Claude is a little out of date. The exact command uh, doesn't use a dash UI. So if you do this exact thing, you will find that Claude actually is out of date uh, and you need to do that. Uh, you need to just cut it. So you just need to run this command Shared CN at latest. Anyways, what we're really looking for is this bad boy. So we're gonna run that um, and it, Pretty cool feature, you click run there, it adds it there and runs it automatically. So now we in theory have fixed these issues. Maybe we have, maybe we haven't. Um, and now what we can do is we can just go npn run dev and check that again and see uh, if the issues have been resolved. Just refreshing, it does sometimes take a second to uh, start up. Boom, there we go, let's make it bigger. There is our website. So part one is now done. We now have a working Next.js application using our code. Awesome. The next step is we get it up on GitHub. Now you might be wondering what exactly is GitHub? It's just a place to store our code. And what we're gonna do is we're going to make it so that every time you push new code to GitHub, it automatically goes to Vassal where we're gonna host our website. And so therefore your website will update every time you send code to GitHub. Great, so what we need to do is we need to create a new GitHub repository. Nice, so I'm just going to GitHub over here, I click new um, and I will call it example website dimension. There we go. And in general, I'd recommend creating private repositories until you know what you're doing. Nice, okay, so we've got a repository now. Now what we need to do is we need to connect our local instance of Next.js that has our website with this one. And so we can push code over here. Cool, so I can basically just follow these instructions over here or follow what I have over here. Nice. Nice. There we go. And then you need to do this one over here, but we don't know what our remote URL is. We have to go to GitHub and check out what that is. So that's actually this bit over here. And this really just tells this local computer where this remote, uh, where this remote um, repository is. It basically just tells it like this repository right over here, this one is where I want to send the code. Um, and then Finally, we just run this command, and this command is the one that actually pushes it to the cloud. And it's gonna ask you for a password of some kind. There we go. Nice, so I've done that now, and I just hit refresh on GitHub, and there we go, there's our code. And now we are very almost done. Our code is now online. We, in theory, could share this with other people, but we're obviously trying to, to get it live. So I'm now gonna to go to Vassal. Uh, you can create an account on Vassal using your GitHub uh, GitHub app. And then we're just gonna go over here, just actually make this bigger, add new project, 
and it automatically is going to connect to your GitHub account uh, and show your, your projects over here. And then I just select this example website dimension. I go import, say deploy, and it's now going to deploy. And once this is done, your website will be live. Great success, our website is live. We can now go to the dashboard over here and we can see our website. And there is now a domain over here. So if I click over here, my website is live. This I can send this URL to anyone and they will be able to access the website. And then if you wanna add a custom domain, you just go to domains over here and you can add it. Nice, so this is how you host a website completely free. Now it will seem a little <laughs> bit complex to some of you and granted it is a little bit complex, but once you can do this, this is essentially the foundation for basically building any web application. Once you know the basics of how to do these processes and you have some inkling of an understanding of Next.js, you can build whatever you want. I had just finished editing this video when I realized I actually forgot a pretty important element, which is how do you update your website? You know, you've done all this work to create this whole setup. How do you update your website? So what I've done over here is I've just changed this to yellow. Um, so what I can do here is I copy the code, go to cursor, paste it, save. Um, and you just want to make sure that you have your web server running. And let's maybe change the word over here, dimension to Philip, just to show that you can also obviously edit the, the code over here. It doesn't need to be too scary. And then if we go to our local instance, because this is still just local, we can see, okay, boom, this is updated, um, looks beautiful. Now what we want to do is we want to push this to GitHub, of course, because um, once it's in GitHub, it's automatically going to go to Vercel. So I'll just go git add that git commit dash m, uh, you know, updated title to Philip. Um, I'll just make it yellow Philip. Uh, there we go. And then git push origin main. Nice. And there we go. Now it'll take basically a minute and then Vercel will update. And you can now see over here that we are busy deploying a new update. And when this is done, the website will show our latest changes. There we go. And if I go to the project now, visit the URL, there we go. Philip is the new standard for collaboration. It makes no sense, but it's awesome.